Yes! All right! He is defeated! Woohoohoohoohoo! Oh man! I have to tell you guys, this game right here is absolutely brill. It's br br I absolutely love that! Sonic 1 on the Game Boy Advance is fantastic. Fa fan I have to hand it to Sonic Team. Sonic on the Game Boy Advance is aw. It's, oh, it's oh, oh, awful! It's rubbish! Oh, I just can't do it! We all know what day it is today, and I wanted to make an attention-grabbing thumbnail, reel you all in, wind you up by saying that this is the greatest Sonic game of all time, then go, joke! One minute annual compulsory prank video, done. But even on April Fool's Day, this excuse of a game doesn't even deserve that sort of praise. It's that bad, it's universally hated, and it's one of the subjects that nearly, I say nearly, all Sonic fans can agree on. But, I've never tried this myself, and I had to take other players' word for it. Until now. Does it have any redeeming qualities that everyone fails to mention? Or should this really be chucked into the fire to burn? I know I'm going to regret this, but welcome to my Sonic Genesis Game Boy Advance review. The year was 2006, and it was going to be the year for Sonic, but for all the wrong reasons. Promising the greatest experience yet with the infamous Sonic 06, Sonic Team thought because this was the Blue Blur's 15th anniversary, that title alone wasn't going to be enough. They also wanted to release something for the hottest portable around at the time, the Game Boy Advance. This would be the perfect excuse to transfer the Hedgehog's very first main game into the palm of our hands. Unfortunately, stressed for time, they cut a lot of corners, and as a result, it turned out pretty notorious. Although a lot of us were able to avoid it and never had to experience this iconic port, as it was only released in North America. It starts off with the usual warnings and licensing messages from Nintendo. But it follows with the higher quality Sega splash screen, which actually looks alright. Same with the new Sonic Team logo, rather than the boring text that we're used to seeing. So far so, uh, what the heck? Stiff animation, flashing in your face text ordering us to press the start button already, and the music is... midified? Wow, that was my high morale shot down extremely early. We're presented with three selections here, original mode, anniversary mode, and options. Let me be very honest with you right now, I only very quickly tried anniversary mode, just to see what the difference was. And that alteration is... you get the spin dash. That's factually it. It works well enough, except for the camera that's always descending as soon as you press down! But they could've just put that in the main playthrough. I totally understand that this was meant to be as close to the actual console version, but they've already messed that up with the title screen! It's an excuse to make the game look bigger than it actually is. In fact, they could have just added that as a choice in the option menu itself! A simple on-off toggle for the spin dash would have sufficed. Anyway, when I first started it up, I did go original and in comes the very slow, yet smooth title cards, with the squished text which I assumed was done to compensate the new screen resolution. Right now, I'm not getting the authenticity vibe from the game. The level then loads up, and at first glance, with the exception of the flattened HUD and the obvious screen crunch, everything appears to look very good. That is until you move. Good lord, what is happening here? The game engine is completely butchered compared to the vanilla game. Heightened acceleration, the ability to come to a complete stop and even change direction in mid-air, the off-putting ground movement, especially on slopes, this is going to take some time getting accustomed to. Sonic is a lot heavier in this version that making some simple jumps can be very challenging. This 1-Up, despite being in possession of speed shoes, is now out of reach. And regardless of being heavier, air resistance has vividly increased. Mild leaps become almost impossible, bouncing on enemies with height are a no-go, and clutching some hidden power-ups are now unattainable. You know the speed shoes at the beginning of the Spring Yard Zone Act 1? Yeah, now that's impractical to collect. Where it is now difficult to reach certain areas, there are occasions where the physics will jump to the other end of the scale. I assume a lot of flags are getting miscalculated or not even resetting properly. Hit a wall in mid-air, you'll stop but suddenly resume your previous acceleration immediately as soon as the gangway is clear. Springing out of the water... Whoosh! Bye then! 
And did the Game Boy Advance lose some CPU power over its lifetime? Because there's slowdown everywhere! I wish I was exaggerating, but clearly, this game was rushed and thrown out into the wild to meet the Christmas target. It's struggling to perform the easiest of tasks, such as going around loops, and even as basic as breaking monitors. The engine really cannot process all of the information in time that you even start to see sprites popping in and out of existence. At least the sprite limit doesn't seem to be a thing here, so I guess that's a plus. All of that muscle memory you've tucked away during your lifetime of playing Sonic 1, you can forget all about it here. And not just because of the physics, but there are other minuscule changes that makes an impacting shock to the gameplay. Remember when you didn't get a lot of time to grab that big ring if you bypassed it? <laughs> well, they slash that panic time intensely. Go off screen and you've missed your occasion to seize the emerald. This game is so bipolar with its speed. Hitting monitors, nice and slow. No big ring for you, get lost! Since when were these spike balls in Spring Yard Zone exactly parallel? Why are these spike chains spinning quicker? What's the deal with these sliding blocks moving faster? Although that's actually a godsend, why am I even complaining about that last one? I suppose not all tiny changes are for the worse. Let's just point out that they removed the spike damage feature. I mean bug. As you may have been able to tell by now, the music and sounds are not a one-to-one -one conversion. All sound effects have a twang to their playback, or some noises have been swapped out completely. Is Sonic farting as he's breaking these walls? The music sounds like something you would hear from an old Nokia from the noughties. These tunes are nowhere near the quality of the home console version, despite this portable having a better sound chip. I was hoping throughout my game time, there would be at least one song I might actually find acceptable. But alas, none of these cut it. What do you all think? I'm already understanding why this got heavily criticised. It's been an appalling experience so far, but I do have a few... Well, calling these pros would be generous. I quite like the way the air bubbles now dance about to give the effect it's underwater. Can't say the feeling is mutual for the sound effect. The art has been directly ported over and little to no change has occurred, although some pieces, especially in Scrap Rain Zone, seem unfinished. Meaning it is faithful to the original, but it also means a lot of the screen space is taken up. These special stages are the most broken aspect out of the entire adventure. They couldn't even get the background to stop glitching out. Not really a good presentation there. Remember when I said earlier you can change direction while airborne? Well, taking advantage of this tactic, we can just glide our way through these mazes and reach the emerald with ease. Just look how quick I'm whizzing by. With the final emerald chase, the game spawned me practically right next to it. The diamonds you have to break, you can literally drill right through them with little resistance. The whole map still rotates, but in a very jagged tradition. And the R symbol is just as puzzled as us on what to do next. And for the rest of the display, on the whole, it just feels like I'm playing an old Java game. But at least you get to unlock a fancy jukebox when you complete the game, but in reality, it's just a spruced up sound test. If this was some third party attempt, or just a bootleg release, well, we can just forget all about this existing. But no guys, this monster was resurrected by Sonic Team themselves. I'm sorry, but how could they stoop so low? Especially for a birthday title. With its inconsistent speed, going really slow one minute, then super duper fast the next, incorrect sprite use, limited animation like the labyrinth rails here being static, tremendously abysmal physics, and ear deadening music, I really cannot recommend this game. I'm sorry if you're disappointed on hearing my verdict, but this is my opinion. Who knows? You may like it. If you must play Sonic 1 on the Game Boy Advance, even though it's incomplete, Stealth, a tech member behind Sonic Mania, proved that Sonic 1 can play beautifully on the handheld. Only Green Hill Zone is available with partial labyrinth and an odd special stage, but you also get to play as Tails or Knuckles if you wish. And 
That's everything that I have to say for Sonic Genesis on the Game Boy Advance. Everyone wanted me to try that out according to my game's request list, and I'm hoping that this review will satisfy your needs. What? What do you mean you want to see me play it from beginning to end? Was that not enough for you guys? I just... I... Oh. Livestream link is there.